Government scientists and Moderna withheld crucial data about its new COVID-19 booster, the bivalent booster, from federal government officials, and they're not happy about it. According to CNN, the data kept under wraps revealed that an updated booster might not provide any more protection against COVID-19 than the other booster, the original shots. This information would have likely been pertinent during meetings held last year in which advisors mulled over whether to greenlight that booster. Advisors on the advisory committee that works with the FDA on vaccine approvals expressed concern over the lack of transparency. One such advisor told CNN, quote, decisions that are made for the public have to be made based on all available information, not just some information, but all information. The data excluded was based on a study that examined how well each vaccine elicited antibodies against the Omicron strain. Basically, the information withheld from advisors didn't include results on who caught COVID-19 and who did not. Rising reached out to Moderna for comment, but as of taping, we have not heard back. So here's the key paragraph from the CNN report, which is very good. Glad they're doing this. Among the hundreds of participants who received the original vaccine and showed no evidence of a prior COVID-19 infection, over the period of the small study, 1.9% became affected. Among the hundreds who received the new bivalent vaccine, a higher percentage, 3.2% became infected. Um, the preprint did not indicate whether these findings were statistically significant, but so th they're saying that might have made the FDA say, well, do we really have enough data to conclude that th there's a reason to approve this because it's not giving very much benefit. It's a little hard to tell from both the wording of this article and the wording of uh, being used by everyone involved yeah. exactly what we're comparing. If we're comparing the bivalent booster, which I believe is is uh, it's authorized. That's the purpose it's authorized for. They were I hoping it would be that. better against COVID. Uh, Omicron. Yeah, they're certainly hoping it would yeah. be better against Omicron. And they were comparing that. And I'm not admittedly 100 percent clear if they're comparing that to people who just got vaccinated or people who got vaccinated and then got the initial booster. But either way, it was not it, it's either not improving on the vaccine plus booster or it's not improving on just the vaccine. Yeah, I think that the implication is that it's not, in fact, a better booster, which maybe doesn't make that big of a difference if they're both generally similarly mm -hmm. effective. Hey, OK, you got options. If you like Moderna, you like Moderna. If you like Pfizer, you like Pfizer. Except for the fact that U.S. taxpayers spent nearly $5 billion on the new booster, which has been given to more than 48.2 million people, according to this article. So there is a kind of a misappropriations of funds angle to this. There is, I think, scrutiny that needs to come down about the relationship between these companies and the government and the way that they're basically getting um, like a pay, pay to play deal here. Uh, yeah. These guaranteed huge multi-billion dollar contracts to, you know, issue out these jabs that aren't necessarily in every instance medically indicated. Especially if we're talking about requiring them, mm. which we're, we're not in most cases talking about that anymore, although there are still college campuses who are requiring them. They're requiring the bivalent. Uh, I, I looked at some. There's some Ivy League camp. I can't remember exactly if it was Harvard or yet yeah, one of those, at least I think multiple, were still going, were going to require, if you were going to set foot back on campus, you need the bivalent booster, which there's data that the FDA wish it had seen that might have changed its mind about whether that should even be allowed or recommended. And, and then obviously we've talked about adding uh, COVID vaccines or boosters, et cetera, to, you know, to the schedule list, mm -hmm. um, which will not necessarily require it, although there will be municipalities that will just say, oh, yeah, this is on the schedule. This, is, this vaccine is scheduled. So if you want to go to school here, we expect you to have all the vaccines on the schedule list. Some will not do that, but some probably will. And then there will be a liability shield. Yeah. So I that's think a danger. For the people who are going to require vaccines, I think the question would have been, are they going to require this booster or the other booster? Not, yeah. not whether or not this information would cause them to not require boosters at all. But, yeah. I, you know, I take your point. I, I mean, I personally do feel like the, the, the biggest problem with this is because there's not a claim being made here about the fact that these don't work. Or, you know, they, they might not work as well as another one, but, they, you know, but it's the idea that the government would have paid money for a, a substandard product when a, a, a perfectly mm -hmm. good, superior product, frankly, right. is already on the market. And, you know, there are all kinds of interesting kind of um, uh, legal mechanisms to try to claw back money when people have extorted the government, you know, these kind of key TAM cases you can t you can bring on behalf of the American government. And we'll see if anybody actually pursues 
those type of things. But to your point, Robbie, there all are all these liability sh shields in place specifically around these vaccines. And it's part of why they've been able to rush things so fast and get away with a lot. There was a time where the rushing made sense earlier in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I understand that people were having to make these cost benefit analysis because of how many people were dying of COVID. But these days for these mistakes to still be being made. I mean, you see now this is a CNN report. These are the government health ofi uh, officials who have been um, really criticized mm -hmm. throughout this process, who are the ones that are saying that they too feel misled. So it's, it's a really interesting development. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if this will open the door up to certain, uh, to more scrutiny, generally speaking, of how the pharmaceutical industry is operating in this space. How it's been, how it worked government contacts to put pressure on social media to uh, to deplatform people who were expressing skepticism of vaccines under some circumstances. We talked yesterday about new Twitter files disclosure showing that Scott Gottlieb, former FDA commissioner and also a member of Pfizer's, he's on the board of directors for Pfizer and is a is a uh, spokesperson on on television for all sorts of COVID uh, for, for the pandemic, for how we should comport ourselves during the pandemic was, you know, pressuring, was trying to get Twitter to take action against a former FDA commissioner who mm -hmm. was saying, uh, you, in his view, you wouldn't necessarily need a vaccine if you had, if you've already been infected with COVID. Um, and he was saying, if you haven't, then vaccine's great. But that, you know, that kind of thing, which could undermine uh, the bottom line of a Pfizer or a Moderna is something they didn't want you to say. Yeah, for sure. It's, sure. it's very worrisome. So I'm, I'm glad anyway to see this getting mainstream coverage from an outlet like CNN because there are some, you know, very, you know, very pro pro vaccine people reading CNN, which I'm not saying that's necessarily wrong. But you want to hear you want to hear some contrary information and you want to hear this is the FDA itself. The yeah. people who put utter faith in the FDA. I'm not actually one of them. But there are people yeah. who put total faith in government health advisors. OK, well, government health advisors are saying. You didn't tell us everything we needed to yeah, know to make an informed decision about this. But isn't that's this, something people should listen to. This is also something that we're seeing with the Twitter files. You, you've acknowledged, you've, you're the one that's pointed this out, Robbie, that so much of what we thought was just kind of pure, partisan, pro-liberal mm -hmm. uh, um, advocacy was actually the people at these institutions who've made mistakes, mind you. The Twitter, you know, they, they, they made bad calls, but that they were being peer pressured as well. And people internally didn't like what was going on any more than we liked what was going on. And even people like Joel Roth, who have been the focus yeah. of a lot of criticism, Relentless were in fact pressure pushing back from the government. a great deal as much yeah. as they felt like they could. Maybe they should have done more, you know, but so often it's not the partisanship. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I, I feel like a broken record, but it is this, the, this corporate influence, these pharmaceutical companies twisting people's arms hiding things from scientists, hiding things from the government, and, and inducing the government to make bad decisions. Does that make the government like off the hook? Absolutely not. They have a, a, an extreme, enormous responsibility to the American people to dot their I's across their T's and to not let the pharmaceutical industry get so entwined with them in the first instance. Well, and, right, because people are going to leave the government and send them, then they exactly. send the boards it's of these the revolving companies. Door. They're responsible, absolutely. But like this is why, I mean, I hope this issue continues to get depoliticized and that people across the political spectrum can focus on what the root of the problem is, which is this nefarious corporate influence as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Yeah, the, the cooperation between two large and unaccountable entities, um, they, they want to hide information from you. Well, one is technically accountable, but we have to hold it well, accountable. <laughs> <laughs> technically, the well, they're, yeah. It's, <laughs> in practice, it's hard to hold uh, both of these entities accountable, but we would. We, that's what we try to do here every day. More rising right after this.